When you think back on your high school experience, what stands out in your mind? Some of you may be thinking about the struggles of fitting in, while others may look back and see their glory days as just that, glorious. And some of you will think about the feelings of anxiety and estrangement that come with being a teenager who is seemingly never taken seriously. But in any case, for most people, high school was a time where your problems seemed like mountains to overcome and your most coveted relationships were always with your friends, as misery loves company and, well, let's face it, what is being a teenager in senior high if not miserable? These are themes that can be found in many coming-of-age horror films, and in some ways it has cemented itself as a reliable trope for most teen horror films of the 1990s. From the struggles of finding friends, to dealing with peer pressure, and of course having to validate your fears by proving that your teachers have been taken over by extraterrestrial monsters who want to destroy the human race, The Faculty is a film that faces all of it with horror, humor, and a whole lot of goo. <laughs> And now, 25 years since the release of this film, it is clear that this teen slasher science fiction mystery movie is a truly inspired reflection of the high school experience, but amped up with its supernatural sprinkled story. And tonight, we're gonna look back on the underrated film from Robert Rodriguez that has more history, more relevance, and more to offer than meets the eye. Join me in today's breakdown of The Faculty, where we deconstruct the details to figure out why it's awesome and what we can learn from Kevin Williamson's endless wisdom on surviving horror flicks. I'm Keir Gomes with Joe Blow Horror, and you're watching Deconstructing. Now, the way this show works is we take a look at the movie from four key categories. First, we look at the origin, where we discuss the history of the film and how it got made. Then we move on to Legacy, where we discuss some of the lasting impacts from the film since its release. Digging deeper into Mystery and Trivia, where I'll go into some of the dirty details from behind the scenes and give you a few fun facts about the movie. And then the X Factor, where I talk about the unforeseen elements that made this movie the true cinematic treasure that it is. And of course, what's a good horror retrospective without some tasty corn syrup and delicious carnage candy? I've always wanted to do that. Now, if you're ready, then remember to like the video, and of course, keep your backs to the wall, because we are about to dive into... The faculty follows the story of a group of teens as they investigate the increasingly strange behavior of their parents and teachers within their high school in rural Ohio. As the teens get closer to solving the mystery, the threat of an evil alien colony grows bigger and bigger. Think Invasion of the Body Snatchers meets The Breakfast Club, but with a solid cast of 1990s pre-fame talent like Elijah Wood and Famke Janssen. I'm gonna shove my foot so far up your ass, you'll be sucking my toes till graduation. So, how did this all start? The Faculty was written by legendary horror screenwriter Kevin Williamson, who you know as the writer and creator of the classic slasher franchise, Scream. Although Scream was released two years before The Faculty, the movie was actually written before we got the likes of Sidney Prescott and Ghostface on the big screen. In fact, The Faculty was written in 1990, five years before Scream was even in production. Originally penned and pitched by David Wechner and Bruce Kimmel, The Faculty script was shopped around Tinseltown and pitched as an alien slasher film for teens. The only problem was the script was originally devoid of realistic teenage dialogue and the characters were more cut and dry than a 90s angsty slasher movie would demand. So the film was not optioned by any Hollywood production studios. Until... The success of Wes Craven's cult masterpiece, Scream, saw Hollywood begin to dust off any old scripts involving high school kids and murder. This renaissance of hack and slash summer cinema would of course come to be known as the 90s slasher era, where we got movies like Popcorn and I Know What You Did Last Summer. Included in that lineup is this movie, and after Scream became an instant smash hit, Miramax, or specifically Harvey and Bob Weinstein, bought the script from Wechner and Kimmel and then brought in screenwriter Kevin Williamson to rewrite it. Hello. 
The studio would have Williamson originally change the film's dialogue to better suit its young characters, as well as add in some new characters to make the story more of its time and appealing to young people. This is clear by the highly convincing dialogue, which is very true to how kids would talk to each other in the 1990s, at least for me and my friends. Fuck you, titbags. Well, everybody calm down, please. Kevin Williamson was also originally set to direct the film, as the Weinsteins felt that he had the best grasp of the material, but Williamson declined the gig to focus on his directorial debut, teaching Mrs. Tingle. I would say that Kevin Williamson probably regrets that choice, but honestly it's not like this movie was a mega success either. God damn it! So without Kevin Williamson to direct, the Weinsteins hired Robert Rodriguez after his sensational work on From Dusk Till Dawn. The film went into production in 1997, and the rest, as they say, is history. Now, this movie was not critically well received and not as well loved as, say, Scream was. But the film didn't go without its fans from day one. I recall this movie being talked about fondly from members of my family and friend groups when I was young, and I've always looked back on this movie as an underappreciated gem waiting to be rediscovered by the masses and praised as a truly well made recreation of the alien invasion subgenre. Hell, maybe that's what this video will be. Yeah, right. Hey, it could happen. Critically, the film was panned by most reputable sources, with Variety saying, The faculty works hard at mixing a canny cocktail of synastic in-jokes, affectionate teensploitation, and high-octane suspense that's as enjoyable as it is impossible to take seriously. I can't sit here and say that the movie reinvented the genre or anything, and I can't even say that it's the best representation of teensploitation, but what I can say is that despite the underwhelming Rotten Tomato scores and the fact that it lost money in its opening weekend, the faculty's home release helped the filmmakers turn a profit, and I personally rewatch this movie often. How do we know Spielberg, Lucas, Sonnenfeld, Emmerich haven't been visited by aliens? And maybe they're aliens themselves. With a cast consisting of Jordana Brewster, Josh Hartnett, Clea Duvall, Elijah Wood, Salma Hayek, Sean Hattesey, Famke Janssen, Usher, Jon Stewart, and Robert Patrick, it's safe to say that this movie must have done something right. I mean, would you look at this f***ing cast? They're just turning us into mindless slaves they can control. In terms of the visual effects of this movie, I think it's easy to criticize movies for poor CGI, and especially movies released so close to the era of spectacle cinema like The Matrix and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Crap. Crap. Mega crap. But if there is one film that I will defend for being clever with its use of digital effects and blending them perfectly with practical effects, it's this movie. The faculty not only had to face budget restrictions, which limited their use of expensive CGI, but they also had to balance the larger-than-life alien made with digital effects and also deliver anxiety-inducing practical effects for some of the film's more horrific moments. <laughs> Safe to say, this movie is objectively remembered for its incredible cast and impressive effects. In some retrospectives going around the World Wide Web, the faculty has received praise for its blend of Kevin Williamson's sharp and witty teen drama and Robert Rodriguez's ability to capture horror and camp with mastery and precision. I'm paraphrasing of course, but the bottom line is that this movie lives on as a retrospective treat for horror fans. Like you. And me. Okay, listen to this. Now, this is something that I personally will mention to everyone in the room whenever this movie gets brought up, and I am not kidding at all. So, The Faculty was released in 1998, and one of the stars of the film, Jordana Brewster, was also in production on a film you may have heard of called The Fast and the Furious. Get this though, before the Fast Saga became an absurd high-octane blockbuster franchise, the original film was considered a small, intimate film about cars. A small and intimate film about cars. We're gonna have to dig deeper than that. So Jordana Brewster was quoted as saying the following about the faculty. It was sort of like the inverse of Fast and the Furious, right? So with the Fast and the Furious, I was like, this is a small movie about cars. It's a really fun summer project. 
But with the faculty, it was like, you guys, this is going to be huge. Look at all of these successes around us, like she's all that and scream. And then it turned out it wasn't so huge. We thought it was going to be massive, but it was a cult classic, so that's really cool. I just love the idea that at the time, Jordana Brewster thought of Fast and the Furious as her fun summer project and considered the faculty as her big break movie. Could that be more ironic? It's like rain. So whenever your friends or loved ones bring up this obscure 90s gem, be sure to mention that Jordana Brewster at one time considered the faculty her magnum opus and the Fast and the Furious her intimate indie production. I'm sorry, I just can't get over how f***ing funny that is. <laughs> Yo, is this much fun, man? <laughs> and now, the segment we've been building up to. The reason we're here. The big one. It's The X Factor. Now, when I was rewatching this movie for the hundredth time, I found myself really overthinking this segment, mainly because I have so many personal biases towards the film and Robert Rodriguez and Kevin Williamson, but the purpose of this segment is to look at the accidental successes, or at least the unintentional elements that went on to become significant in the film's legacy. For example, John Carpenter had no idea that the simple, low-budget score he personally made for the Halloween film would go on to become the most iconic theme song in horror history. And not to compare Halloween to the faculty, but you get what I mean. My first thought was to give the X Factor to the film's perfect representation of suburban high school life in the late 1990s. But in reality, the Weinsteins hiring Kevin Williamson was a move made specifically for that purpose, as William knows how to deliver authentic teen writing. Then of course, I considered using this segment to talk about the movie's rich themes like peer pressure, identity struggles, and the horrific accuracy of being gaslit by your own parents because your behavior is deemed an embarrassment. Oof, too personal. We love you, son. We want to help you. Then believe me. I'm telling the truth. But again, these things were very deliberate, and I think everyone involved in building out this story was well aware of what they were doing. And to be fair, it's really not a secret that the film's commentary on teenage alienation is one of the movie's main praises. And then it hit me. There was a clear X Factor sitting right in front of me this entire time. A shining glimmer of aligning stars which gave me the very thing I had been searching for. The thing that makes the faculty a true cinematic darling. Zeke's haircut. No, but really, the standout X Factor of the film has been in front of us the entire time. It's the cast. I know. You're thinking, Here, how can the cast be the X Factor of the movie? It's not an accidental decision, and it was obviously an intentional decision made by the casting department or the filmmakers or the studio involved in putting together the movie. Yes, I know. But at the time this movie was being made, the cast were not considered A-list actors, and certainly not considered an all-star lineup. Think about it, man. This movie was Elijah Wood right before he became the iconic Frodo Baggins in The Lord of the Rings. And we had Famke Janssen right on the cusp of being Jean Grey in the X-Men films. And hey, there's Usher right before making his smooth R&B hits like Confessions. And not to mention the wild ride that Jordana Brewster would be taken on with the Fast Saga. This movie was a goldmine of tapped and untapped potential. The supporting cast was obviously well thought out, with Salma Hayek playing the school nurse, Robert Patrick as the rough and hard-ass football coach, of course, and Jon Stewart as the science teacher, perhaps best known for the scene where he gets revealed as an alien. This is usually the point where somebody says, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's get the fuck out of here. Thinking about the quote-unquote child cast of this movie is really special when you see that most of its stars are still working consistently in Hollywood today. And it may sound cliche to praise the way these young actors approach their on-screen dynamic, but hey, it's my show and it must be said by me. Uh, yeah, it was good. I liked it. With Elijah Wood's character Casey being our straight man, we get to really examine the differences and complications of our star quarterback, our obligatory gothic youth, our prom queen, our choir girl, and Josh Hartnett's character who is the story's John Bender, for all intents and purposes. 
and it truly makes this movie feel like so much more than a bargain bin summer romp from your formative years, and more like a time capsule that reminds us that before Frodo Baggins was roaming Middle Earth with walking trees and creepy critters, he was in a pool house, getting high on homemade drugs and saving Ohio from an alien invasion. Guaranteed to jack you. <laughs> and through my rewatches of this movie over the years, the cast has been the one thing that everybody seems to remember. People are like, hey, wasn't Usher in that one? Or, oh yeah, yeah, the other one where Robert Patrick is a terrifying supernatural being. And I'm like, yeah. The faculty is 25 years old, and it may have faded into obscurity for most, but there are a small few out there who will know exactly what I mean when I say that you should only run if you're being chased. Good night.